Hi, folks. Welcome to Crisco's Corner. Unfiltered commentary. And that's your truth, the real truth. Please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, thank you for your support. Welcome back. This is a little piece I put together. Put some commentary on who's calling the shots. Who's really the president? Now, all presidents have tons of advisors, cabinet members, national security councils, and God knows who else. The list is almost endless. Political operatives, you name it. But in the end, the decision is up to the president. That's the way it's supposed to work. The president takes in all of the opinions and information, and assuming, of course, the information is accurate, which is another kettle of fish. Frankly, I'm not sure if the current president is getting all the information, especially concerning Afghanistan, but I digress. Giving him just enough information to make the wrong decision. I'm not sure, or just complete emptitude, just complete unqualified for the job. But put together a little piece here, and we're going to talk a little bit, and uh, tell me what you think at the end. Let's play this clip first, because I think it's the most important. What you know now, do you wish, like, you had a, sec- a, a third term? Um, and I, I used to say, you know what, if, if I could make an arrangement where... Um, I had a, I had a, a stand-in, a front man or front woman, and, and they had an earpiece in, and I was just in my basement in my sweats mm-hmm. looking through the stuff, and then I could s- sort of deliver the lines, but somebody else was uh, doing all the talking and ceremony. Wow. I, I'd be fine with that. Oh, really? You'd be fine with that? Interesting. Now, I know he's just shooting the breeze. This was probably right after he was president when Trump was in office. But I think all presidents will say that to a certain extent. But I think he was dead serious. Not that they were going to implement the plan. That's not what I meant. And I really and truly don't believe that. Joe Biden's just a weekend at Bernie's character they put in the chair. Even though he's damn close. I think they control the current president. Joe Biden, I think they feed him information just enough to make a decision was what they want. And they're faceless, not nameless. I know one thing for absolute certainty, no one elected them. Now, there's going to be some that say that nobody did that. I can't say it out loud for Joe Biden, but that's a different issue. Right now, it is what it is. And... Is it a deep state, a shadow government? I'm not so sure. It looks like it. The evidence points to it directly. Who's calling the shots? Who either through deception or just lack of information on purpose, wrong information is causing President Biden to make the wrong decision. I don't know. Now, here's Obama's cabinet. As you can see, there's Biden on the right. And there's a lot of familiar faces there that still work within the government. Susan Rice in the end. And there's a whole bunch of people that are still there that came back, I should say. And a lot of them in the White House, that's the one thing that Trump should have done right away. Everybody in the White House everybody is fired or asked for their resignation. They do that as a matter of course. Every single president, if reelected for a second term, asks the entire cabinet for their resignation. It happens as a matter of course. It's been going on forever. But, What happened this time? They screwed up. Trump won. Trump won. What do they do? They keep the shadow government 
running the government, the deep state, so to speak. Trump calls it the swamp, and that's a good term for it, actually. They really ran the place. Was Trump just a figurehead? Of course not. He had too strong of a personality, and they couldn't deal with it. So all the leaks started in every little thing. I mean, every little thing. You know, I mean, it's just, I mean, crap, weird stuff like Melania Trump is passing secrets to Vladimir Putin at a state dinner because they didn't use an interpreter. It's come to find out, they both spoke fluent German. She speaks five, six languages, by the way. They make her out to be an idiot. She's incredibly intelligent. And they don't like very attractive, beautiful, intelligent women, apparently, in the Democrat Party. Ones that can't be controlled. But I digress. The mechanism was still there from the Obama eight years in office. And they were really the nuts and bolts of the government. Now, Trump got a lot of stuff through. That's the amazing part. Every single Democrat was against Trump. And I mean, like, hatefulness against him. And a good half of the Republicans in Washington and in public office, i.e. the U.S. Congress, the House of Representatives and the Senate, half of the Republicans were against him too. And they only had two years to get stuff done. That's when the Republicans had control of the Senate and the House of Representatives. He got a crap load of stuff done. Can you imagine? But anyway, that's part of the problem. There was a lot of Obama holdovers. So who was really running the country, at least in theory then? Who was really running the country? These guys see an opportunity with the election of Barack Obama, and if you remember, transform the United States. It was doing pretty well, Mr. President, and I'm referring to Obama. I'm trying to be respectful here. It was running pretty well for over 200 years. Yes, we had our issues. We certainly had our issues. And here is Biden's cabinet. Now, you recognize some of the faces. You have Merrick Garland in the bottom center. That was the supposedly person that was screwed out of the Supreme Court seat, even though everybody knew when it's an election year and there's a party opposite the president, no one nominates for an empty Supreme Court seat. And I saw TikTok videos of the progressive leftists just screaming in cars, making TikTok videos, and, oh, my God, why did you die when the Supreme Court justice died? It's sickening. It's disgusting. All you had to do was live a few more days. It, it's Anyway, here are the cabinet, and here's the funny part. We're going to talk about not each individually, but as a group. Now, I want to ask you something. Of the 15 faces you see here, take a guess how many either worked for Hillary Clinton and worked closely with Hillary Clinton, and I mean, I don't mean working on campaigns as people in the same party do. I mean, work for them. Intimate relationship, and on top of that, worked for President Obama. It was right lock and step with everything he said and did. Take a guess how many weren't associated with Hillary Clinton and or Barack Obama. Take a guess. Stop the video and see if you can guess how many were not in Hillary Clinton's camp or work for Barack Obama, either directly or indirectly, you would be extremely surprised. It's, like I said, stop the video and see if you can guess. And the answer is, every single one of them was involved directly with Hillary Clinton, but mostly Barack Obama, except for one. Pete Buttigieg, you see on the left in the circle. And if you remember, Buttigieg was one of the Democratic candidates for president. What was he, Mayor of Great Bend, Indiana, or some damn thing? A town that was 
dying like a lot in the upper Midwest and the Northeast where I live in upstate New York. The Rust Belt, as they say. And if you remember, he dropped out. He dropped out of the campaign. They must have whispered in his ear, hey, Pete, you want to be transportation secretary? Oh, I'm not qualified. Huh? We used to be mayor of Great Bend. Ah, who cares? We'll make you transportation secretary. So it was one of the first things he's done. He's thinking we'll put a mileage tax in everybody's car. Every single person, the vast majority of these people, all worked either directly or indirectly for Barack Obama. Here's the other thing. These guys are great at making it look like perception is reality. Look at them here in a group photo with the president and the vice president. And right in the middle, I believe that's Blinken, the one that got us in this gym in Afghanistan, the withdrawal, completely effed it up. Or he was just following orders. I don't know which. Either way, it comes out the same. John McCain once, even though I had some issues with Senator McCain, rest his soul, I respected him. I didn't like his neocon type attitude concerning war, but that's a different issue. I like John McCain a lot, mostly because of his service to our country. He made a speech on the Senate floor that Blinken will be not only wrong, he was supposed to be up, he was up for a cabinet post, but he was dangerous. Well, that ended up being true. But look at this perception is reality. We are in a pandemic. Look how, look, even us, even the elites of the elite in the United States that run the most powerful nation in the world are wearing masks, and so should you. And here's the funny-ass part. I'm sure that five seconds after the photographs were taken, they took all the masks off. And how do I know that? Because we've seen it a million times with these people. Just lately, Nancy Pelosi with a huge fundraiser. People all squished and tight together. What was it? 55000 a plate or some damn thing? And there they were. And there they were. Perception is reality. And it's working for them. It's working. If you believe it to be true, it is true. We need to shut everything down. We need to stop everything. And here we are again. Now, I did that for a joke on the middle of the table in the back. I put Biden and Obama together. That's not really them. I put that in there for a joke. But here they are. Look how far they're seated apart, showing everybody how to follow orders. Now, the gentleman on the left without the mask, I assume, is speaking as they're all looking at him, or most of them are. And I put Washington weeps. Against the wall, there is that famous painting of George Washington that Dolly Madison, President Madison's wife, saved in the White House when the British burned it down. I believe it was 1813, 1814, I'm not sure. It doesn't matter. And there he is, our first president. Washington weeps is right. Can you imagine him transporting him into today? Now, I'm not talking about he'd be a major of the technology like the electric light and telephones and the internet and computers and cars and appliances and all kinds of gadgets and things that we've developed over the years. But how this government is run, how huge it is, how ridiculous it is, he, he just, he wouldn't, he would weep. And he's been sitting, I believe he's been in this room for a very, very long time. And he's seen and heard a lot of things. I wish we could have a Twilight Zone episode where he could walk out and, and, and just tell us all the stories of things that he's heard from past presidents. He was our first president. He started this whole thing and did it for eight years and walked away. And he said two terms is enough, but not for these guys. We're not talking about the ideology that lasts for a third term. We're talking about a third term. Washington weeps is right. He would be beside himself. And so would Adams. And so would Jefferson. 
and so would Madison. Even Alexander Hamilton would be outraged. And he was a big government person to begin with. Now, here we are. Here's Obama's National Security Council. And there's Blinken on the left. There's Rice in the bottom left. And all the same talking heads. And there's Biden on the right of President Obama. All the same people. And I call it wash, rinse, repeat. It's just the same thing over again. And it's so incredibly obvious, but nobody's talking about it. Well, some, some mainstream media networks are. It's just for some damn reason, at least in my lifetime, and I was born in 1956, except for John Kennedy in the Cuban Missile Crisis, and he only had a short time because he was assassinated, of course. The Democrats have horrible, horrible foreign affairs policy. Absolutely horrendous. I mean, Lyndon Johnson was, I, I thought he was the worst until Obama came along. I thought Jimmy Carter, I thought Jimmy Carter it personally is an excellent man. Damn good man. Would like to have him for a father or a father-in-law. But he sucked as president. And that's the thing. Being a nice guy doesn't qualify you to be president. Trump's got a lot of personality faults, a whole bunch. And he's in his 70s, so he's never going to change. I didn't care. I'm still a Trump supporter. Barring some unforeseen circumstance, I will be a Trump supporter if he runs again next time. It's not the personality I'm after, it's results. And when it comes to foreign policy, these guys suck. And here we are, the same group again, with the Biden administration. That's why I call this wash, rinse, repeat. It's ridiculous and it's wrong. And the American people, I don't think they knew what they were getting into when they voted for Joe Biden. All they knew, millions and millions knew, um, two things. One, there was a D in front of Biden's name. And two is, he wasn't Donald Trump. Mostly, he wasn't Donald Trump. I'll bet you a good of the 80-odd million people that, well, I can't say what I want to say, have voted for Biden, at least on paper. I don't think they know what they're getting into. They voted against someone instead of for somebody. And this is the best that Democrats can come up with. If you recall... They all started dropping out of the presidential race and the Democratic primaries all at once. Of course, they gave Pete Buttigieg a really good job being transportation secretary who pretends to ride his bike to work. We know that's a lie. It's, it's unbelievable. So they've, Uncle Joe. When I was a Democrat years ago, even when I was a local Democrat here on city council in upstate New York, I didn't care for Biden. I just thought he was a harmless fool. And so, the Obama people, the DNC, all the Democrats that worked for Obama or had was really worked closely with Hillary Clinton must have all sat down and decided we got to pick one. Instead of destroying each other on television, it's helping Donald Trump. We need to stop this now. We can pick someone that we can control. That looks innocent enough. It's Uncle Joe, just like Obama did. That was a brilliant choice for Obama, by the way. White, elderly gentleman that took the fear away to a lot of white voters. That, that was Obama's thinking at the time. And it was the perfect choice because in a lot of ways, the vice presidency is the worst job in the world. Some call it the best, worst job in the world, but only half of the vice presidents in the U.S. history have become president. But there he was. He was vice president for eight years. The perfect choice. Do all the dirty work. Do all the things that Obama didn't want to do. Joe was always there to counsel Obama when he went too far. That was the theory. So now when Trump wins, they are totally, their hair is on fire. They need to do something. They had everybody drop out at once. How they got to coordinate all of them to do that, I don't know. It's like herding cats, but they did. 
Now, they gave Pete Buttigieg a job. He's the only one who didn't have a job or wasn't rich, by the way, so that's probably why. And there, here we are. Now, can Biden make a decision on his own? Probably. But he's being manipulated. He's being fed false information. If that's not true, if that's not really what's happening, he has completely lost it. Now, I hate to play this clip, and I hate to call it elder abuse, but this is exactly what it is. Uh, and, uh, but I know still, you know, uh, there's work to do, and uh, that we have the, the uh, you know, and we're going to make this up uh, instead of us going to Exxon, kind of get back out there. And uh, so, uh... <laughs> can I say one thing, please? <laughs> well, hell, you know, you know. What you know. Can I say one thing, please? You're the president of the United States. You can talk when you want to. And they all have done it. It's not rude. Wherever room he's in, he's the room. No matter who it is. It's respect for the office. When people are sitting around a table talking and the president starts to speak, everyone shuts up. That's the way it works. He's the president. Can I say something, please? So I'm going to leave you with this to think about. Who is calling the shots? Who really is setting national policy? Not as an advisor, but really making the call. Nobody knows who they are. Well, we know some faces, but how many of them are faceless and unelected that are running the biggest economy in the world and the most powerful military in the world? Think about that. And we'll end the video here with a couple of, couple of shots. So think about all you Biden voters out there. I'm not going to chastise you like I've done in the past sometimes. I don't think you knew it would come to this. But it has. Afghanistan is a perfect example. This cluster F with the CDC and COVID and how it's handled all across the country at the federal level. How they're making companies do things that's unconstitutional for the federal government to do. The last time, let me give you a, fun, let me give you a funny example. Take a guess who made this quote. When government... And business and corporations meld together and work hand in hand. Corporations and business at the direction of the government. It's fascism. And it is. And that quote was from Bento Mussolini. Well, now, do you wish like you had a, sec a, a third term? Um, and I, I used to say, you know what, if, if I could make an arrangement where um, I had, a, I had a, a stand in, a front man or front woman, and, and they had an earpiece in, and I was just in my basement in my sweats mm -hmm. looking through the stuff, and then I could sort of deliver the lines, but somebody else was uh, doing all the talking and ceremony, wow. I, I'd be fine with that. Mm -hmm.